So, what's going on on the Unleash Your Inner Badass episode number six? <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, and uh, those who actually. are new to this activity, <laughs> we decided to show up every week and talk about topics that majority of entrepreneurs tend not to mention. Sometimes they're embarrassing. Sometimes we think that something wrong with us. And most of the time we feel embarrassed to ask for help or express this kind of situation. So we cover topics, uh, anything about mindset, emotions, and everything in between. I don't even know. All kinds of things that affect our business life, our personal life, and we help you to get those breakthroughs. Today, we're going to talk about something every single one of us dealt in the past. And for some of us, it's keep holding you back. And it is imposter syndrome. So if you're familiar with what I'm talking about, let us know if you've been going through imposter syndrome right now or at some point in your life and how it affected your life or your business. We would like to hear from you. Yeah, so let us let us know. Um... It's been it's been a big one for me. I will I will admit, you know, right from the right from the beginning, um, even as a dentist, you know, it was um, it it was comparing myself to other people and thinking, well, you know, I've got the degree, but am I good enough? Um, and then going from dentistry to network marketing, like thinking, well, I had the degree for dentistry, but I have no qualifications to be a network marketer. And then becoming a coach, I certainly didn't have any qualifications to become a coach. And it helped, it kept me stuck for the longest time. And here's the thing is, um, you know, every, it, it's normal. It is completely normal. Um, and I'm sure I spoke about this um, a while back, but it's, um, I heard this analogy and it really resonated with me is, you know, when you, when you get in your car to go and drive somewhere, you put your seatbelt on. Okay. And we don't think about it. We put your seatbelt on to keep you safe. And your imposter syndrome is actually like that seatbelt, just trying to keep you safe. And once you acknowledge that, okay, it's trying to keep me back in that comfort zone, trying to keep me safe so that I don't grow, so I don't stretch, so I don't, um, you know, the, Grow, get out of my comfort zone and learn these new skills. And you know, as you as you learn those skills, then then imposter syndrome will it will go until you step into a bigger role. And it 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 always will come back as soon as you keep growing and you step into a bigger role. It will come back. But I always like to think of it as that seatbelt. You know, just trying to keep me safe. Um, so let me know if that let me know if that resonates if that resonates with you. Um, a few things that helped me to deal with my imposter syndrome is knowing that it's not a bad guy. <laughs> imposter syndrome is completely normal experience and it will show up in your life many, many times. And if you can recall as early as, you know, maybe you started a new school, right? You felt like you don't belong there. You feel like you felt like an imposter until you became comfortable. It's like, well, it's not so bad, right? And then that imposter syndrome disappeared. Mm -hmm. Another time it might show up when you're starting a new job because you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't feel qualified. I don't know if I'm good enough for this position. I'm actually surprised that they hired me like, oh my gosh, right? So that imposter syndrome will kick in again. Also, it can show up in relationships when you feel like, oh my gosh, how in the world this person likes me, right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't belong here or whatever. So again, imposter syndrome. And also when you start in a, a new business, a new adventure. Also, when you go to a new resort, let's say brand new resort, <laughs> it happened to me and I caught myself the first day with, when you don't know where the restaurants are, where's the pool, where's this, where's that. You feel like an imposter, right? I don't belong here. And then I remember by day six, I was like, oh, those are newbies. Oh, those are <laughs> yeah. I know everything here. You feel like you belong here, right? So that imposter syndrome disappears. So this is kind of like funny to observe how it affects 
our life and also our confidence. And for a lot of people, it's holding them back because they think that imposter syndrome is something back. And it's telling me that I probably shouldn't be doing whatever I'm doing. When in reality, it's completely opposite. Imposter syndrome telling you that you are on the right path and you're just uncomfortable because you're starting something brand new. So mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense too, uh, to you guys. And so here's this comment, my, mine is, is fear because I always want to do it correctly. And the two, two things here is number one, perfectionism, you know, and being a, being a perfectionist is huge. And you'd like thinking that I can't put something out there. I can't publish something. I can't do something. I can't take action until it is perfect. Well, here's the thing is it, you're never going to be perfect. There's, it's never, ever, ever going to be perfect. And it's just taking that imperfect action and getting used to taking imperfect action. And I think, I think to dig into that a little bit further, yeah. as far as the perfectionism, because a lot of people are like, well, you know, yes, I'm a perfectionist because I'm a recovering perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you're a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> it's actually ingrained into us from the minute we go to school or we're or even with our parents, right? Because we want to please other people. Yeah. We want to do what's right because when we don't do what's right, we get in trouble, right? Now think we about want this. to look good. Yeah. You want to look good, right? So like my in. kids. If they jump on the couch, right, then I'm going to flip out. So I'm like, get off the couch. That's not how we treat our furniture, right? So there's a right and wrong what we do in pretty much everything we do. And it, it bleeds over into, into our adult life. And that's where it comes from, right? So you have to think about what's the programming that you were taught, right? If you had strict parents, like my kids would say, I'm a strict parent. You know, if you went to school and had a strict principal or strict teachers, that kind of thing, you want to please those people. You become a ple people pleaser please. and a perfectionist. Yeah. So yeah. it's deeper than just, you know, I want everything to look good. It comes from somewhere else. So you have to yeah. be aware of that for you to be able to fix it. Right. So. Yeah. And then to add to that, if you go deeper down into that is more like wanting to be perfect because of fear of what other people might think. Right. So it's like, oh, like Brandy, I can't have my kids on the couch. Like what happens if someone sees that in a live? And then now they're like judging me on like my parenting and like all the things. Right. So it's like just snowballs and can bleed into all the things. Um, and this is something that I went through, um, or, you know, early on, uh, um, kind of not even knowing anything about the industry of network marketing. Like, who am I to uh, have authority on skincare when I'm an athlete? I don't take care of myself. Like, <laughs> that was the last thing I was doing, right? But once I got over those fears, over the perfectionism, more of the fear of, of stop worrying about what other people thought. And then, you know, built, uh, transitioned into a new way of building my business and built a business, right? You lose some of that, but then you have the next rung on the ladder, right? You step into bigger shoes, you become that leader, and now you're in bigger shoes, more responsibility as you feel. Uh, and now it's like imposter syndrome can creep back in again, oh. right? Like, All the time. <laughs> so it's a cycle, right? It, it's not just going to go away, but as you step into bigger shoes and you climb the ladder, you are more equipped because you're aware right? That it's creeping in and you have a process for yourself to get yourself out of it before you start sabotaging yourself, relationships, and your business. So, um, yeah, I just what like I'm like back on what Adrian said, instead of being embarrassed of your imposter syndrome, right? Or you feel like you don't belong here. You're not qualified. Uh, instead of having fear towards imposter syndrome, I would advise you guys build a relationship with it. <laughs> it's not, like I said, it's not a bad guy. It's there to tell you something. Although it's trying to keep you in the comfort zone and protect you and keep you in the known, right? It's also effective to build a relationship with that imposter syndrome and take action despite that it's there. So just First step, be aware, like, oh, I'm feeling like an imposter. Why am I feeling that way? Well, that's because I'm starting this new thing and I feel that I'm not qualified. The funny part is a lot of people think, well, if I get certified, a lot of like health coaches, right? Those who are in health and wellness, if I go take a bunch of courses and get certified, 
I'll feel like I'm more qualified, right? Not going to happen. <laughs> the paper says so. The paper says so. <laughs> I went and I got coaching certification, right? I still feel like an imposter more times than I would like to admit. So don't think that if you get certified or take a bunch of courses or whatever, it's going to feel you more qualified. What's going to feel you more qualified if you take action and keep showing up despite of that imposter syndrome? And Jessica shared something. Um, this is what I'm struggling with. I'm in skincare and I'm not with perfect skin. So I'm always worried about that. So what should you do, right? Um, it's actually your benefit that you don't have a perfect skin. Show up just the way you are and it's like, look, guys. I'm struggling today. Actually, I'm struggling today. You can't see it was like sudden acne. Like what the hell? I thought it, I've, I've gone through it like years ago. It showed up again. So I have a few solutions for those who are dealing with the same thing and we can try it and test it together. I'm actually going to try this today because that's how it benefits, should benefit you. Or maybe you can try this thing. We're going to try it next time. And I'm going to show you guys what, you know, how it, help me or whatever see how i my skin is not perfect but i have that confidence not because my skin is perfect i have that confidence because i know there are some solutions out there and i'm willing to share them that's basically it right yeah you're like the perfect prospect for your yes. product <laughs> yes. and and <laughs> instead of like thinking like it detours me from going live how about like I need to show up and show other people first of all that what I'm using is a solution right it works um but like you don't have to you know you can repair right this and and I'm going to show up and I'm going to show you I'm going to take you on my journey so like Kat said that's actually a strength mm -hmm. um and people are going to see your transformation in real time so, and you're um, so much more relatable than somebody who gets on who literally has beautiful, perfect skin. And people can't relate to that because the, your perfect prospect, the person that you're there to help, is struggling with acne, is struggling with problem skin. So I'm going to encourage you to, to just show up and be you and show the real you. Just be authentic and show the real you because that, that is going to be way more encouraging. It's going to be way more authentic than thinking, well, I'll only go on when I'm literally caked with makeup and, I, you know, people can't see my imperfect skin. No, because that's not, that's not going to be, that's not going to be relatable at all. The other, so the other thing that I want to talk about is this fear of failure. You know, this fear of, of, of taking action and getting it wrong. Number one, there's no right or wrong. Okay. So we need to take that. This comes from school. Like Brandy was saying, it's come from yeah. school and it's got to be right or wrong. You know, and you end up like not doing something because you may get it wrong. Yeah, because remember when you raised your hand in, in school and you, and you know, you thought you had the right answer or whatever, and you were like, oh, I know this one, right? And you raise your hand and you say the answer and the teacher's like, nope. And they say some like sarcastic remark or whatever. I'm sure that's happened to more than just yeah. me, right? And I don't think that teacher was like trying to be an a-hole or, you know, like really damage my, my personal being. I think it's just, you know, people are where they are in life, right? And that's that's how it happens. But then you're like, oh, I don't dare raise my hand because that was super embarrassing. So you're like embarrassed in front of the class and all those things. But really the only way to get where you want to go is to fail faster. And it's it's it literally is the only way to get there, right? Like everybody's like, oh, well, you know, you've had all this success and all these things. We just failed faster. That's what we did. We finally decided that failing wasn't a bad thing and we just did it faster. We're like, oh, well, that didn't work. Let's try this, right? Oh, that didn't work. Let's try this. That didn't work. Let's try this, right? And we stopped giving a flying flip about what other people thought about us and focused on what worked, what didn't, and what we might do differently. And we did that process over and over and over faster and faster and faster. So I get it. I get being like, man, i terrified to do something wrong, right? And even us now at the success level we're at, we still feel that imposter syndrome sometimes. We're like, oh, who are we to be, you know, building this massive company? Who are we to be helping all of these incredible people get results? Who are we to be, you know, whatever, right? Fill in the blank. But 
it's part of just human nature. It's part of and your your vulnerability, your vulnerability and you being real, like sharing stuff like that. Cause who's gonna share that on live video all over social media, right? That we are still sometimes we feel imposter syndrome. Most leaders, most coaches, most people that do we what we do would never tell you that, right? But your mm-hmm. vulnerability is your superpower. That's what it is. Like, you know, when we share our deepest, darkest secrets, when we share our, our fears and our, you know, our, our feelings and our emotions, that's what creates that human connection. And that's what builds it faster and faster and faster and faster. So that's, I don't think you ever get out of imposter syndrome. I think you just become aware of it and you know, it's happening. Like it's your ego telling you, Oh, you're not safe. Like Fran saying with the seatbelt, right? It's like, oh, you're not safe. You're trying something new. Who are you to, you know, speak on Eric Worre's stage or whatever your goal might be, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's just crazy how that works, but it's that lizard brain that's mm-hmm. you know, it's gonna stay there and keep bugging us. So you just have to feel the fear, like it's there, embrace it and move forward and walk into it. And, and you do that over and over, like Brandy said, over and over, and it's not as scary to go through the process, right? And, and so if you have fears around things, right? Okay, I have fear of going live. I'm going to do it anyways and take action because the action is going to get you to move you past the fear versus keep you stuck and then kind of go backwards. Like Kat said, maybe this is a sign I'm not cut out for this, right? No, that's that other voice that you're going to let win that wants to steal your, your dreams and your goals and everything you want for yourself. Right. But feel it and do it anyways. And then you're going to come out the other side, maybe with some sweaty armpits and, you know, whatever, and butterflies feeling like you're going to puke, whatever the thing is. And you're going to realize I didn't die. And guess what? I'm going to, I'm going to do it again tomorrow. And it's going to get easier and easier and easier for you to walk through the other side of that. Yeah. I'm going to share something funny and I hope it guys helps you. Think about it. The real imposters, those that con people or do some scammy shit, right? they actually never feel like imposters. Mm-mm. It never crosses their mind. <laughs> they're very comfortable at what they're doing and they know what they're doing. So if you feeling like an imposter, it doesn't make you one, right? It's just that uncomfortable urge to pull back and stay in the comfort zone where in the reality, it's actually telling you, I know it's hard. I know it's scared. I'm just letting you know that it's an unknown territory but you have to train yourself to recognize this feeling and say, okay, I know what it is. I have to keep going, right? Just build a relationship. Like I said earlier with that imposter syndrome, make it your friend. Even right now, um, I know when we're going to start doing something bigger, uh, we all going to, all our imposters is going to kick in and it's going to feel like, oh my God, why, why did we decide to go there? Right. It's going to be so much painful and so unpredictable and we're going to fail again. We've been there. (laughs) So what I'm trying to say is that there's a good phrase, the top of one of one mountain is the bottom of the next. So every time you're going to step into that new, bigger role, bigger shoes, like Adrian was saying, that imposter syndrome is going to come in, knock on your door, and try to keep you away from doing that big, scary new thing. But it's up to you how you're going to respond to it. Are you going to let it control your life? Or are you actually going to figure out how you're going to control it and take action despite of it? Despite it, yeah. You know, just becoming aware of it. Thank it for being there. Okay. I know you're trying to keep me safe, but I'm going to do it anyway. And when you fail is to celebrate those failures. You know, I like to, I, I really like to to celebrate the mistakes and celebrate the failures because it means that you're taking action. It means that you've stepped outside, outside of your comfort zone. It means that you've done the action, you've taken the action. And then each time you do it, each time you fail, you just keep failing forward. You just keep moving forward. Um, and it just becomes easier and easier and easier. I want to say like, 
if you if you'd spoken to me you know two years ago and could I have um you know hit the live button okay yes we're doing it four of us but could I have hit go live without like any talking points without okay what are we going to talk about okay let's just go and talk and we just came on and just just talking um yeah and sometimes you know there's a little bit of an awkward silence I think okay <laughs> but I actually love it now how it's unscripted yeah. like we don't know guys what we're going to talk about like three minutes before we push that live button and we just if start talking I, and I was thinking up. there was a possibility I was going to do it alone so when you're doing it alone you kind of like have to come up in your head with the script right sort of or bullet points and go with it but I love how my thoughts come from our discussion here. And if I was actually doing it alone, those ideas wouldn't have come up. <laughs> so I always love how we show up all together and all this discussion happens on the spot. If someone told me, like friend said a few years ago, just, oh, just go live with this amazing people together without preparation, I'll literally poop in my pants. Yeah. And I remember Brandy actually did it to me once. She sent me a message I think it was <laughs> five years ago. She said, <laughs> um, I need to go live in 10 minutes in front of 2,000 people and I want to interview you. Uh, can you be ready? I'm like, <laughs> That's her brandy bomb. My That's her brandy bomb. She drops brandy bombs like that. <laughs> my initial reaction was, hell no. <laughs> I don't know. It's like the fear kicked in and like my initial impulse was, hell, I'm not doing this. This, no, like <laughs> I can't. But then, you know, I was like, okay, yeah. And my my fingers typed, yes, sure, let's do this. But inside of me, it was like, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that I did that five years ago because everything used to be planned, right? Like it was very planned everything was very planned <laughs> scripts and everything so that's great yeah so i love it get a message <laughs> today, like she actually did hey do you guys want to go live today instead of friday we're like sure, sure. Let's all it. right let's do it it didn't, it didn't like move any muscle in my in my fear or whatever <laughs> <laughs> your fear there was your measurer fear. <laughs> we have done it since then so many times but it became like second nature right? But in the beginning, it was like, hell no, what do I do now <laughs> to survive? <laughs> so it's funny. That is funny. Right, you know what, your, what your biggest takeaways have been? Drop your biggest takeaways down in the, in, the, in, the, in the comments. And I would also want, I would love for you to share one thing that you're terrified of doing that you're going to do today. Okay. So yeah. What action that you are terrified of doing that imposter syndrome is keeping you stuck is stopping you from doing it. Share what it is and and when you're going to do it. And I'm going to encourage you to do it today. Yep. Okay. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. And tomorrow, comes, tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> it's always today. today. Really it's so what action step are you going to do today? And, and I could almost guarantee today. what that action needs to be. It needs to be live video. I was going to so, say, yep. All of don't you do it like recorded. Free. Don't do it recorded. Do, do it recorded. live. Yep. Do it live. It's got to be today and go live. And Jessica, if it's all about, you know, your, uh, your, your skincare, right. And not having the perfect skin. I would challenge you to do a live wow. where you start with your actually bare skin and maybe talk about your vulnerabilities and then start putting your makeup on show show people what you're using right like it'd be really cool i love those freaking videos how many of you get sucked into those videos i was just gonna say something about that fran yeah i have to shower and get presentable so I, you probably can't see my hair is filthy because i wasn't we weren't planning on going live today so it's like <laughs> my hair's just scraped back okay yeah you don't okay, number one, showering. No, nobody can smell no, you. So nobody can no smell one, you. Yeah, I can't, can't smell through the phone. And <laughs> again, talking up, about being cares. authentic, being you, just showing up as you. I'm gonna encourage you to just go live and show up as you as the real authentic you. Because do you think everybody, do you think all of your perfect prospects, do you think all the people who are following you are showered and looking perfect? <laughs> Probably 
not. And it's this perfectionism. <laughs> it's this it's this idea that everything has to look perfect and be perfect. And you really do just have to put on the top. I mean, because you can't see what's happening on below. Yeah, you want to see the bottom of mine? Look at this. Yeah. Uh-huh. I went, okay, I'm not even going to stand there because I don't even have a brand. And you're lucky I put a bra. No okay. bra here either. So, uh, and some dry shampoo. It was really gross. All Mine right? is so dirty. I just threw but it up in a bun. I will tell you, once I threw that whole perfective, perfectionist crap out the window and I challenged myself to get my live done no matter what it looked like, what time of day, my kids are in it, Right. I got so many more people that reached out to me and came to me because they could relate that I was a real person. I mean, I was at the baseball fields in my truck, like doing live video at my kids' games and practices. I mean, not while they, not while they played their game, but anywhere, everywhere. My kids were in it. I mean, I did it camping, okay? Um, so you don't have to be perfect. Just do the darn thing. I remember a friend <laughs> one did a live from the roof of her house. I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was that was one of the challenges we did. Remember that, friend? I remember. And I, I, I remember looking around thinking, I hope none of the neighbors see me standing here drinking upside down. <laughs> or drinking room. upside down. I just I I honestly I like nearly wet myself and then I had to climb so back funny. in through the window. <laughs> Who's watching me? Sandy, when you say your fear is going live, not sure the topic to cover, how about the fear of going live? Ooh. There you go. How about we challenged you and you can share that? Yeah. There so, you go. I got to awesome. psych myself up. Awesome. Don't psych yourself up because you'll psych yourself out. Just go do just, it. Just yeah. literally, as soon as we finish here, go and hit the live button and do it. Even if you talk for two minutes, yeah. just yeah. do it. And you know what? You could even say, I've just been challenged to go live. I'm terrified. I This is a skill that I want to learn how to do, right? And just like talk about all the fears and yeah. what you're going to do. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. Today you're conquering that. Do it. Just do it and do it. Just do it anyway. Honestly. That's actually what was my first live about. I was like, oh, I'm live. I'm terrified. Look, my neck is all red, but I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> my first live was cheesy. It was so cheesy because I had to get all dressed up and do my makeup because I thought I had to be perfect. Oh my gosh. And I, oh my gosh, it was so cheesy. It makes me cringe. Watching. Mine popped up in my memories the other day and I just, oh, yeah. I'm going to have to go hunt mine down and watch it. I had probably, if I watch it, I'll probably delete but it. But just like, be so proud for that person right yeah. like give it some grace and be proud of that person like how much you've grown you have, yeah grown and accomplished like that's yeah have you guys yeah. seen have you guys seen the uh the filter where it like it shows it splits the screen and it has the what you teenage self and then you like and it, like yeah. i've been watching a lot of those they're so powerful and if you think about that like what it's would you say powerful. to your younger self or what would like what would i say to my myself like six years ago when I first started this online journey, right? And I would cry in the shower and you know, all those things. Like I just I thought there's no way you're ever gonna make it, but I wasn't willing to give up kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just so powerful, like Kat's saying, to give yourself grace and love that person. Love that person from yesterday, right? Like mm -hmm. you know, you just it's it's so powerful. But anyway. And on that note, I want to also tell you guys that other people don't give a crap about you. <laughs> they don't. The they only don't. person who cares how you look like and sound like and what you're saying is you. you. <laughs> yeah. Other people are way too busy thinking what you think about them, so they don't even think about you. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all in our head. And once you understand the mechanics of it and how to get over it, it, it gets better. Yeah. So I think the number one thing is becoming aware that's what's happening, right? You're in a imposter syndrome and you're like, okay, I'm aware I'm in a imposter syndrome. Like I know it's happening. Then you've got to ask yourself, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do to get out of this? What's the fastest way to get out of it? That's to do something. <laughs> I'm not even going to brush my teeth. I love it. <laughs> Again, they can't see. They, can't they see. don't know your teeth are fuzzy. And they can't smell. 
<laughs> they can't see and they can't smell. I actually once did a live <laughs> and I'd been eating chia seeds and I had a chia oh, seed no. stuck between my front. I didn't realize until right, like, you know, I published it. Oh, okay. Well, oh, you know, well. what's the chance that there were people sitting there with the looking glass? Yeah, yeah exactly. Your chia seed. <laughs> exactly. Zero. Like, yeah. Do I have they anything? They couldn't in my care. Team. They want to know. Teeth type. <laughs> let me know guys if i have drop down questions. below if you can see anything <laughs> oh, I, love it. Time I can look at myself today <laughs> i love it it's so good so good so yeah really all people are really waiting for is for you to show up and help them they don't they don't care what you look like they don't care what you look like no they want to know how you can help them awesome guys well we will see you again next week um, have a wonderful, happy Easter. Um, and again, I want to see, so Sandy, you're going to do your live straight afterwards. I'm excited for you. Um, but, uh, let us know if you're watching the replay, what you're going to do today. Uh, and we're excited to see you and we'll see you again next week. We will be here again next week with some more, um, truth bombs, badass tips, <laughs> truth bombs. <laughs> You're kicking the kick in the butt. Kicking the kick in the ass. Kicking the ass. Kicking the ass. Happy Easter, y'all. Yeah, happy Easter. We'll see, see you next week. week.